injection system on these no-touch cleaning machines. Um, what we're going to show you is going to apply to all of our units, the uh, 1250, 1750, and the 2150, um, and even the Omniflex with the pump units. Uh, some of this stuff we'll, we'll cover. Uh, first thing, obviously, is the, uh, the gun uh, needs to be in low pressure. Uh, also, the chemical cap can be a problem. The, the metering tip could be plugged. The uh, chemical plug inside the jug of chemical uh, may have a problem as well. So we're going to show you how to uh, narrow down the problem and uh, troubleshoot this thing. So we're going to start with the gun. And like I said, you have to be in low pressure, um, which is you slide the nozzle out for low, in for high. So it will only draw in low. So if your gun is not sliding back and forth, uh, it may just need a little bit of lubrication in there. Um, there is uh, also a, uh, sometimes you can get some mineral buildup inside the gun, which can uh, uh, cause your chemical not to work. So if you suspect it's the gun, see our uh, maintenance video on the guns. Uh, so you're in low and uh, you're not getting any chemical draw, then your, your problems are more than likely elsewhere. But the way we like to troubleshoot it, we like to remove the gun completely. Take your chemical cap off your jug of chemical and remove the chemical cap from your chemical line. So now we're, we're wide open and we're gonna isolate the chemical injector to see if it's working. So how we do that, is we are going to recirculate our water back into the dirty tank here. Uh, we just, we don't want to get, if the chemical does start working, we don't want to get the chemical in our clean water tank. So we're going to turn on our pump. We're going to make sure we got water flow from the end of the chemical line. Nice flow there. And once we've done that, we're going to check the uh, chemical line here. You just put your thumb over the end of it, and we don't have any suction. So we're going to come back here. We need to set our selector valve to A. You can do this test using either the A or the B line. We're going to use the A. Now we've got suction here. Not sure if you can hear that. So we are working at this point. Now, if you didn't have any suction at this point, stay tuned in the video. We'll cover how to. Uh, check your actual injector. But we got suction, so we would move on to the next step. And, and what that is, is we're gonna start putting things back on the unit, one item at a time, until we find where it stops suction. So, and that will tell us the item that is causing our problem. So, first thing we're gonna do is put our gun back on the unit. We're gonna make sure we're in low. Spray it into our, our dirty tank. And we're going to check for suction. Now we have suction, so we know it's not the gun. Now, if you didn't have suction at this point, then you know your problem lies in the gun. Uh, uh, like I said, you can then refer to our gun maintenance video, uh, or you can get you a new gun to put on here. Uh, and that should get your chemical back. Now, we have suction, so the next step would be to put the chemical cap back on. Uh, so we'll put that on. We're going to spray in low. And we're going to check the bottom of the cap for suction. So we've got suction. If you didn't have any suction at that point, then your problem's in the cap. Now, it could be your metering tip. Metering, 
tip could get clogged with some needle nose pliers. Pop that out. And you can hold that up to the light and look through it. Uh, you got two of each metering tip in your pack. You can throw another one in there and see if that resolves it. So we're going to put this back on here without the metering tip and we're going to check it. So that'll tell us if it's the tip or the cap. So we're going to spray again in low. We've got suction. So we know our cap is good and we know our metering tip is good. So then the next thing to do would be to screw it onto the bottle of chemical. If you can see the plug here, you notice the white piece in the very center. Uh, there's a butterfly valve in this and when this piece here interacts with that, it opens that valve up. So if the plug was to get pushed down inside your bottle of chemical, you know, you can, you can get it out and make sure it's sitting up here on, on, on the lip of the jug of chemical. Uh, maybe the plug's worn out, you can get another plug. Uh, each case of our chemical should have four plugs in it. Uh, grab another plug and test it if you think that your, your problem may be with the plug. So we're going to screw this on and check it. Nice and tight. Again, in low pressure. We're going to spray it. See with all the duds. We're getting this chemical. So everything on this one is working good. You can also see in the line the blue chemical in the line. Not sure if you can see that in the video, but uh, the line is all blue now because it's uh, pulling the uh, chemical through the. So we're good on this one. Alright guys, so we just showed you uh, what happens if your chemical uh, injector is working. We showed you how to eliminate your gun as being a problem, how to eliminate your cap and metering tip and your plug as a problem. So if your injector, uh, if you didn't have any suction here with everything off of it, then the problem is with the injector. Uh, there is a, in the tip of the injector is an O-ring, and then a BB sized bearing, and then a spring. Uh, sometimes the bearing will stick to the O-ring, which will cause you not to be able to draw. So one thing, whenever you turn the pump off, uh, always release the pressure by pulling the trigger on, on the gun to keep from having that bearing forced into the O-ring. Uh, so if the O-ring is sticking, there's a really simple technique that we can use uh, to free that up. So we're going to disconnect the, chem or the pressure hose from the injector. Then we're going to disconnect the injector from the pulse hose. They give us a little more room to work. We're going to take this black squeeze clamp off. And then we're going to remove this chemical line from the injector so we can get to this barbed fitting. This is where the O-ring is, the BB size bearing, and the spring. Like I said, sometimes that bearing can stick to the O-ring. So if you got your metering tip pack, there's a small Allen wrench inside. You can use that. If you don't have it, uh, a paper clip works uh, just as well. Just straighten it out and do this. All right, so you're going to take your Allen wrench from your metering tip pack and you're going to stick it into the opening here until it hits. Now, be gentle because you don't want to pull the o-ring. You don't want to just jam it in there. There's, there's a spring behind that. Uh, so you want to be careful. You can, hopefully you can see that there's a the spring pushing back. So that's telling me the bearing on this one is free. Uh, if it was stiff when you first put it in, more than likely that was the problem. You can go ahead and hook this back up. Hook your pressure hose up turn it on and you can just put your finger right here and you should be able to feel suction. Now, if for some reason that didn't work um, or when you took your Allen wrench and put it in here, um, it was already loose. Uh, I would still test it because sometimes you can't uh, tell that it's stuck 
it's, it's just stuck so lightly. But inside of there, I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but inside is a um, stainless steel orifice. Now there's a few different versions of them. Uh, one of them is a flathead screwdriver. The other one uses a, a hex key or an Allen wrench to get it out. Uh, you may need to take that out and clean it um, if, if you got a hard water issue. Um, but that should get your chemical back to working again. Okay, so these techniques that we just showed you should work on both the 1250 and 1750 and even some of the old Kaizen's that have the external chemical injector. Um, now the 21 gallon units is a little bit different because the injector is inside. Now what we showed you as far as isolating the accessories, getting the gun off, getting the cap off the line, those will work on the 2150's and the older 21 gallon units. Um, but let's go get a 21 gallon unit and we'll show you guys how to free up a stuck bearing uh, on the 21 gallon units. Alright, so we got us a 2150 here. Um, we showed you guys how to uh, unstick the uh, bearing uh, from the O-ring on the units with the uh, external injector. We're going to show you how to do it on this 2150. It is a little more difficult because the injector is internal. It's uh, inside this black box uh, up here on top. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to disconnect um, our chemical cap. We're going to turn our selector valve to B. Since we're using our B line, you can actually do this with A or B. Um, then we're going to disconnect our pressure hose. So before we disconnect the pressure hose, we're going to pull the trigger on the gun just to make sure there's no pressure in there. Um, I would wear safety glasses while doing this one just to keep any chemical splash from getting uh, in your eyes. Um, as long as there's no pressure, you should be okay. So we'll disconnect this pressure hose down here right at the machine. Now once we put the uh, uh, air compressor to the chemical line, you're going to get some water out of here followed by the air. Once you get the air, you know your bearing is unstuck. So let me show you how we do that. We're going to take our blower nozzle here. We're going to stick it inside of our chemical line. Now when I pull this trigger, you may want to keep your feet back uh, so you don't end up wet feet all day. So. Now the bearing is unstuck from the O-ring. You can go ahead and reconnect everything and test it. You should be working at that point. And that is how you unstick the bearing from the O-ring on a 2150.